Hello and welcome to Megawatt, where each week we give you the lowdown on the latest piece of kit from the wonderful world of technology and gadgets. This week is all about CES. The show's over, the excitement's finished. Well, it's like it's still going on, to be honest. But what was good? What was happening? What was hot? What should we look forward to for the next year ahead? Let's find out. When it comes to the future, both Microsoft and Intel have big plans. Big plans for the internet everywhere, internet in your pocket, basically. The idea from Microsoft is a device called Telme, which you fit onto a mobile phone, it's connected to the internet, and then using your phone, you fire it up at interesting things around the place, and it tells you extra information. So, you know, you say, well, what's that building? And it will tell you, or what's, you know, what does this do? And it will say, well, there's actually, there's a, a good thing there, there's a video review of this, and thanks very much. Intel's situation is very similar, and it's aimed at people like travelers, basically. So when you go to like the Beijing Olympics later on in the year, if the concept was available, you'd be able to point it to a Chinese road sign and it would already automatically translate it into English, making, you know, traveling pretty much accessible to anybody and the English language dominate everything. Robots, they're going to take over the world, aren't they? Well, that's according to every Hollywood blockbuster you've ever seen. And it's probably the same for CES this year. Wowie had a massive multitude of robots on display. Everything from the Wowie Rovio, a wireless-enabled robot that runs around your house, has video and audio streaming capabilities, so you can just connect in when you're the other side of the world and check out how your family's doing and see whether your wife is cheating on you. Other stuff, he's got the Fem Sapien, a female funky version of the Robo Sapien. And then they've also, just because your pet, dog or cat is clearly not good enough, created a series of live animals. Very cute, and you don't have to worry about the kennel fees. All in all, them and a couple of other players are all launching robots. They're all taking over the world. They're going to be there to help you out. Azimo was at the show showing that he can do some funky MC Hammer dancing. And, it, you know, be prepared to be replaced very shortly. Two words dominated the show, Warner and Brothers. That's right, just the Friday before it all kicked off on the Saturday, Warner Brothers announced that it was ditching HDVD over Blu-ray. What has that done? Well, it sent massive shockwaves through the industry. HDVD cancelled their press conference that was due on the Sunday night for fear that they'd be mobbed by the press of what's happening, how they're going to cope. And then rumours carried on throughout the week. We had Paramount rumoured to be ditching HDVD because there was a get-out clause that if Warner Brothers ditched it, they could too. Then they moved to Quash It. Then another studio announced. Then New Line also came along and said, actually, we've decided HDVD's thing, not, not for us either. And so it's just suddenly turned up the entire format war completely. Now, what does that mean for you and I? Well, it means probably that HDVD is on its last legs, unfortunately. It's a shame to say it, but I can't see how they're going to come back from this crushing, crushing news. I mean, you've got Blu-ray basically all week turning around going, ha ha, we've had a press conference, isn't that exciting? And here is our information. We're outselling HDVD three to one. And of course, with no comeback from HDVD at the stand, at the show, it was like, well, where's the argument? I mean, normally, across the last couple of, last year, it's always been tit for tat. One, time, one comes out with one stat, the other one says, well, actually, that stat's correct, but only if you include sales on a Tuesday. And we haven't had that. So where's this leave us? Well, it looks like it might be a Blu-ray Christmas next year. We hate warranties. Why do we hate them? Well, because they just run out, don't they? And they always run out at the wrong time. It's like, I didn't want to go for the extra three years warranty, my product will be fine. And then one day after the warranty runs out, bang, it's broken. And it's so annoying because then, then you go to the shop and you say, it's broken. And they go, no, I'm terribly sorry, the warranty seems to have run out. It's a day, it's only a day, it's only like a couple of weeks, can you not surely? No, it seems to have fallen down our repair time matrix, I'm terribly sorry. And that's why we bloody hate warranties. One of the big things on show at CES is televisions. Televisions, 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 televisions. There are hundreds of them, literally, from LG to Philips to Sony to Samsung to Panasonic to Hitachi to Sharp. Basically, anybody that makes a TV launched new TVs. And they didn't just launch a TV. They launched 17. Sony launched 17 Bravias. I think LG launched about 18 LG televisions. You know, Panasonic launched another 20-odd televisions as well. So if you haven't got loads of televisions being announced, everything about televisions is also changing. So you've got interactive. Most of them came with internet-enabled access to allow you to get widgets and information straight onto the screen while you're watching television, you know, multitasking to the max. 
Secondly, they've all gone super thin. It's as if someone's turned around and said, January, it's time to lose weight. They've got basically Hitachi, Panasonic, Sharp have all launched televisions that are sort of one and a half inches thin, okay? Pioneer have launched a concept design of their Curio uh, television, which is nine millimeters thin. That's like thinner than an iPhone. It's like, and your big TV at 50 inches in size. But 50 inches, to be honest, just isn't big enough anymore. Panasonic launched the world's largest television at the show. How big? 150 inches. 150, that's like massive. I can't even stretch 150 inches, I don't think. It's just gigantic. And if that wasn't enough, LCD, plasma, well, pff, yesterday's news. We've got OLED now, which basically means that it's gonna be thinner, still obviously smaller, brighter, more contrast. It's the way of the future. Apple might not be at CES. Their main announcements come at Macworld this week, and we'll bring you more information of that next week in Megawatt TV. However, that hasn't stopped a plethora of companies launching iPod-related kit. Big announcements this week are from JVC with their iPod docking TV. Yes, you hear that right. That allows you to watch video content from your iPod straight onto your TV, as well as a iPod speaker that has two iPod docking slots, so you can charge you, yours and the missus at the same time. Other devices from other manufacturers include Creative's XMOD system, which allows you to wirelessly stream your iPod music around your house to another computer, and in addition to that, upscale the content further to make it 720p, something which I'm not really sure how they've managed to do, because that's just magic. Other stuff from the iPhone-related things, are more speakers, more uh, devices that allow you to get the most out of your iPhone, your iPod, but interestingly enough, is they range from pigs to just your regular speakers. Storage might be about as exciting as having a tea party with meerkats. Actually, that's probably quite exciting. But it's one of the big conversations at CES. Everybody from SanDisk to Samsung are creating devices which are tiny in physical size, but massive in storage capabilities. SanDisk, for example, 12 gig micro SD card launched the size of my little fingernail. Samsung, for example, and another one who are dominating the storage capacity. Exciting news, I know, but they've come up with a drive that fits inside a laptop. Actually, you can fit two inside a laptop of 500 gig each. That gives you one terabyte of data on the go. Now, I hark this back to about 10, 15 years ago when I bought my first hard drive, a massive 45 megabytes. It shows how we've come on. And with us all wanting more HD content, storage, unfortunately, boring as it is, is gonna become a massive consideration in the future. The main photography trade show isn't until later in the month, but that didn't stop a handful of manufacturers launching a load of new cameras. The ones that caught our eye the most are Sony's Alpha 200, an update on its current Alpha model, and Casio's EXF1, a camera which was first announced at IFA last year. What's so exciting about this camera? Well, it does 60 frames a second in still mode for six megapixels. Now, what this means is that you can either take 60 frames in one second, or you can do five shots every second for 12 seconds, which is pretty amazing. If that wasn't enough, it also has a video mode that can capture frames up to 300 to 1200 frames a second, meaning that you could make a video and slow everything down. Still, when is it available? Well, two, last, last year, they turned around and said it would probably be in prototype mode for two years. Now, available in March, 500 pounds, bargain. 